Hey everyone, this is Mike with Resurrect Wheel Recon, specializing in mobile wheel repair and brake caliper refinishing for almost 25 years now. Uh, today we'll be actually refinishing some brake calipers on a Tesla Model X. Uh, client bought the vehicle and didn't decide uh, to do uh, get the upgrade uh, brake calipers, um, which really on the Tesla Model X there is no upgraded caliper. It is the exact same caliper that comes on the vehicle. Uh, only that they do it in red and the only caliper that is actually uh, an upgraded series brake caliper on the Teslas is on the Model 3 does come with a bigger brake system um, also in red but the Model X and the Model S it is the exact same brake caliper nothing changes and like I said he decided not to do the upgraded feature um, with the red calipers uh, for the simple fact that they charge anywhere from about $2,500 to three grand uh, for red brake calipers, which is quite a bit of money just to have red paint on the exact same calipers that come on the vehicle as already. Um, so he decided to contact me and found me on, I believe it was either Yelp or on uh, Tesla web forums, which a bunch of guys are actually posting me on there, um, apparently, which thank you guys very much. I appreciate that free advertisement and word of mouth is always appreciated. Um, but as you can see here, and I already have everything masked off and cleaned and kind of ready for paint. The brake caliper that actually comes on these um, is pretty standard. It's just kind of a flat, kind of grayish black finish uh, with the Tesla logo on it. Um, it is a little faded right now because I did prep it, um, getting it ready for, um, for paint. And the process that we do on these things is a three-stage painting process which is a primer which is an etching primer so what it does is actually etch itself into the metal um, then a base coat uh, base coat is just color so whatever color you know whether color is red yellow green hot pink if that's what you desire um, it is just a base coat and so obviously has no durability to it um, what I do unlike the factory the factory always puts their logos above the painted surface on these things and um, you'll notice over time what happens with whether it be Tesla, Porsche, uh, whatever the manufacturer may be, you'll notice that the logos itself will actually start to wear down, uh, stain, and um, kind of lose its luster over time and eventually even possibly wear off with all the chemicals being sprayed onto the wheels, which a lot of car washes unfortunately use based uh, acid chemical. Um, reason being is brake dust is atrocious. Uh, between the oven effect of the wheels getting hot and cold, it will bake itself onto the surface. Uh, so they use these aggressive cleaners to remove the brake dust, but unfortunately, whether it be the wheel, uh, factory finish will redone, uh, and or the caliper, it will actually break down the finish over time and do the same thing as well. Uh, so I always recommend to make sure that it, your local car wash or whoever you're using, making sure that they don't be using these aggressive chemicals. I will say, do you ever spray acid to the body of your car? Most people say no. And uh, that is a good answer because uh, acid, even diluted, is not good. Um, so again, um, what I do is put down the base coat. Uh, once I get the base coat put down, that's actually when I apply the new logos to the surface and then actually clear coat over the logo, sealing the logos underneath the clear coat finish to ensure that uh, there is no um, way for the logo to actually peel off as well as fade over time. It's actually sealed underneath the clear coat um, so that way it um, actually lasts and, and holds um, for quite a while. Um, very rare that I have any problems with the refinishing that I do. Um, I could say honestly um, that my success rate is probably about a 98% success rate um, with the brake caliper refinishing. Can't say I've never had an issue with a, a, a poor adhesion, um, but it is very rare that, that that does happen. Now, that's a lot of it depending on what kind of chemicals you're using. A lot of finishes I, I'm using are a high-grade German-based paint um, that actually does come on a lot of vehicles, uh, whether it be a Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, um, or BMW. Um, so through this process, I will be showing you um, results in what we're doing as time goes on. Uh, once I get the primer down, uh, base coat down, logos down, and what the finished product is going to look like once I actually get the clear coat uh, put onto the caliper. So stay tuned. So, just got the uh, etching primer put down and just did a light um, dusting of the red on the um, on the caliper. So I figured I'd get a shot of that and show you guys 
um, what it looks like just at this point right now. Um, and uh, not a whole bunch to see. Um, but I did put the etching primer down so that white or grace uh, that you're seeing underneath there um, is actually the etching primer. And like I said, I just did a slight dusting of uh, the base coat on it. Um, and I do that um, while the um, primer is still a little tacky, just to make sure I got good adhesion, um, not only on the etching primer to the metal, but also the base coat to the primer. Um, this is gonna allow this to be able to bind together a lot better um, and have good durability uh, through the three layers of refinishing. Again, this is a base coat, clear coat process, a three-stage painting process, primer, base coat, then the clear coat finish. Um, you'll hear a lot of people using products um, that are what they call heat treated um, finishes, um, which essentially it can obviously withstand a little bit more heat, um, essentially. And this paint usually what, what, where it was started was um, refinishing engine blocks uh, because those could obviously get very hot. So one of the biggest questions or concerns I get with clients is that they ask, um, do I use a heat treated finish? The answer to that is no. Uh, to be completely honest with you, I've used the stuff in the past and it is just not good. Um, it never seems to dry properly, always ends up having a tackiness to it, especially because the caliper is going through the oven effect. Um, and what ends up happening is when those brakes start to bleed the brake dust, it actually will attract to those calipers and actually stick on there and it doesn't want to come off. It actually will actually bind itself to the painted surface with the heat treated finish. A uh, second thing that I see very common and a lot of problems with is that um, over time, and even actually a lot of times clients are complaining about it happening within about one month, is that it loses its luster. Uh, for whatever reason, this product is a single stage product. Um, so it has its hardeners or catalysts inside of it and it has its um, shine. So it's all in one uh, when you put this stuff down. Um, and it just, it just dissipates as far as the, uh, uh, the shine goes. Uh, and the other thing is, is that uh, it actually seems to um, start to break down even more once they start spraying those wheel acids and chemicals on it. Um, it really starts to go. As well as is that they're not actually sealing the logo underneath the clear coat finish like I do. Um, you'll see when they have done it with the heat treated paint that the logos actually will start to kind of come off, start to peel up. Uh, it tends to be a problem because unlike the factory, factory actually stencils them on any aftermarket in Tesla, whether it be Tesla, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes, um, they don't sell uh, aftermarket or, or factory uh, decals um, or stencils for the calipers. Um, they have to be outsourced made, um, and so they're actually a decal that actually goes back down on these things. Um, so what we're seeing now, like I said, is, is the primer, which is the etching primer, go down the first dusting of base coat. Uh, we're gonna actually put on probably about three to four more coats of the base coat, make sure it's nicely uh, covered. And again, you can see that when I, ref um, everything in the guts and everything is masked off. Essentially, when these things are done, I want these things to look like that these things did come from the factory. That's one thing that I do get a lot of or hear from my clients is that they're so amazed and impressed how I'm able to get it to look exactly like the factory. In most cases, they say it actually looks better because with the factory OEM ones, you tend to end, end up actually having a lot of orange peel. Uh, because of my painting experience and been doing this for 25 years, as well as one point I was the head painter for a BMW dealership, so I painted BMWs and custom cars, so I have tons of painting experience. Um, and that's what separates me from not only mobile guys, because a lot of mobile guys don't have the experience that I do, um, but as well as even body shop guys. Um, I've seen calipers and wheels done at shops that unfortunately, um, and I won't name names, but uh, it's just horrendous. It really is, you know, it really blows me away that um, this is the type of work that's being put out of a shop. Um, you know, when people see what I'm able to do uh, mobily, um, it, it, it's, there's a night and day difference. Um, and that only comes with obviously experience. You know, I have people say, well, you know, your price seems to be a little high for me. Um, you know, can't you or don't you just blow paint on it? It's, it's, that's not how painting works, not in the auto industry. Uh, you just don't blow paint on it. There is proper procedures, steps that you need to go through. You need, you need to know proper reductions. 
chemical reductions, clear coats, hardeners, what type of uh, speed and what type of temperature it needs to be under contamination, making sure you have no fish eyes, uh, solvent pop, putting on two million layers of clear coat and not laying, letting the first one um, basically uh, tack off or release its chemicals out of it before applying another uh, layer of clear coat. Uh, you tend to get what they call solvent pop where you'll see all these little pop marks or fish eyeing is contamination where it's almost like water or oil hitting water, it just separates. They don't like the two and that's the same thing with any type of um, basically uh, whether it be chemical or some type of uh, solution or, or detailed chemicals or whatever it is um, will actually cause um, the paints and clear coats to separate in what they call fish eyeing because uh, there's basically contamination on the surface. Um, so when these things are done, um, you want to make sure that they're chemically clean. Um, you know, I always like to say they need to be surgically clean. I mean, they have to be clean, 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 clean. You know, all the work done in this thing is prep work and, um, and cleaning. Um, because in the prep work and everything you do, it doesn't matter how experienced of a painter you are, if your prep work ain't good, trust me, your paint's not going to be good. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get on with the uh, next part of this uh, stage, and that's applying the rest of the base coat. I'll show you that, and as well as once the logos get put on, and uh, we'll be back. So go ahead and stay tuned. Okay, well, we just got done finishing putting all the uh, the base coat, making sure that we got proper coverage. Uh, it took about three to four coats to make sure you have proper coverage um, all over the place, making sure that you don't have no bleed through uh, from the primer. Uh, making sure you got all the uh, areas that uh, are hard to see um, that are got um, a lot of times when the guys refinish these things uh, just because the client doesn't see it um, they won't refinish a lot of the caliper or not pay attention to the small details you know for me it's important um, even once the wheels on the car for for my personal preference and for uh, my peace of mind um, I like to make sure when the wheel is off the car uh, that the entire caliper looks like it's been completely refinished. Again, these aren't being removed from the car. Uh, you remove the brake out from the car, you're essentially doing a brake job. That obviously entails more money. You gotta bleed the brakes, um, removing all the uh, brake fluid, removing the pads, uh, seals, you know, all that good stuff. The way I'm able to do it, um, I'm able to get the entire caliper, besides the complete backside of the caliper, which again, nobody will see that unless you're actually underneath the car, like a mechanic looking from the suspension back in. Uh, to the caliper but for the most part uh, the entire caliper is finished um, and again if you're removing it you're going to be spending a lot more money because uh, essentially you're now you're doing a brake job and a rebuild at the same time um, going into you know what i was explaining before is people ask me about cost and majority have no problem you know i charge a very fair price for for what i do um, you know but i do have some that feel that maybe the price may be a little too high um, and, you know, I would say, you know, what I charge is a verifier price for what I'm doing, as well as the chemicals that I'm spraying, obviously, uh, maintaining and running a business. Um, I am a mobile service that is convenient to me as I come out. I do it mobily on site at your home or office. It usually takes about four to five hours to do the process start to finish. The car is usually drivable within about 30 minutes of completion and then just no washing the car for 24 hours. Um, now they say, hey, I can go up to my local auto parts store, buy this heat treated paint, and I can do it myself for a lot cheaper. And I said, well, you know, absolutely you can. Um, but there is a difference between that and what I do. Um, those products, it's either uh, you get a small brush with it, with the paint, and you actually have to brush it on. Anybody that's done any type of painting, you know that leaves brush strokes, and it just doesn't look very well. And then you have products that are actually in rattle cans, and you can do it by rattle can. And that comes out obviously a little bit smoother, but again, um, without the proper experience, proper finishes, you will have a very hard time, if even at all, be able to achieve a factory finish look. Um, the difference between what I do and those products is I use uh, HVLP guns. So they're mini jet guns. Uh, HVLP stands for high velocity, low pressure. And these are sprayed out of a paint gun that's um, generated air compressed um, that I'm able to paint these things and that's how I'm able to get such a smooth finish and use great products versus the other products on the market whether it be in a paint can you got a brush on or out of a rattle can out of a rattle can you just can't get the proper airflow 
a lot of times there's certain things you can do by heating up the can and stuff to get the uh, the air pressure to come out a little bit better so you can lay it down a little bit smoother. Um, but there is a huge difference between uh, using HVLP guns um, and laying down the, sur uh, the, the paint onto the surface. Um, you're going to get a lot better result um, as far as the, the end, end product. And for me, again, 25 years of experience. I do have a good reputation, all five stars in Yelp. And I want to make sure that I'm giving my customers the best product and value for what they deserve and what their car deserves. Um, that's very important to me. Um, I'm, you know, the type of person I'm in business to make money, but I'm not in business to ruin my reputation, you know? So that's why I do stand behind my work. Usually depending on the vehicle, usually about a year or two warranty. I'd love to warranty a lifetime. Um, but unfortunately I'm not your wheel repair, um, or tire guy. I'm not your mechanic doing brake jobs, unfortunately whether it be factory finished or redone, there's always a potential chance of them damaging it through the process. Obviously that's something I don't warranty because I can't control how everybody else does their work. Um, but do warranty if for whatever reason, um, paint starts peeling for no reason. It would almost be like a sunburn. The clear coat would start flaking off um, and just peeling. Um, that would be due to a poor adhesion. Um, but like I said, very rare. I can't remember the last time I actually had to redo a set of calipers because of that. Um, so got the base coat down, got the logos down. So let me, what that looks like. So if you look at the base coat now, um, obviously it's nice and red and the logos are on there. And that's one tough part that people do have a tough time with is actually getting the logos on there. That's one thing I see when people do the calipers. <laughs> logos are not properly angled. They're all over the place. Um, you can see in the base coat right now, um, it is again, red, um, but it is, um, kind of a satin finish right now. That's cause it is just a base coat. Once I get the clear coat finish on there, that's where it gets its nice shine, uh, gets its durability and hardening to it. Um, and actually protects the paint as well as protects the logos and gives it, it's uh, very strong durability. So essentially it's the same product that comes on the body of the vehicle. Um, it, all manufacturers no longer it's no longer a single stage it is a base coat clear coat process um, on all vehicles and this is the same process that I put the um, calipers through um, so that is the front caliper and let me go ahead and show you the rear and one thing I do want to point out is when putting the logos down and that's another problem that I see that people do is not putting the logos down properly. As you can see on this, the T reads from the bottom and A is at the top. Letters are always supposed to be, the bottom of the letters always should be facing towards the center hub of the wheel. Um, that's pretty much in all manufacturers, whether it be Tesla, whether it be Porsche, BMW, Mercedes, it's all the same way. So one side of the vehicle, you'll see that the T reads from the bottom up and we'll jump to the other side. And you can see that the logos on this side, the T is up on the upside, reading down on the bottom, bottom letters facing towards the center hub of the wheel. Um, the only manufacturer that doesn't do this for whatever reason is Ferrari. They actually do it where the letters are all facing directly the same. So on one side of the vehicle, uh, the bottom of the letters will actually be facing towards the outside, which to me looks a little funny. Um, but this is the way all manufacturers do it. I can tell you right now, two vehicles I do the most of um, is Tesla and Porsche. So I'm very familiar uh, with both of these vehicles as well as the Tesla. There's certain jack points that you got to make sure to jack up from. Um, you don't want to damage the battery packs on the bottom. Um, as well as you got to know how to work the computer modes to be able to uh, put it into jack mode. As well as put these things into um, tow mode. What tow mode is, is basically... Uh, releasing the parking brake uh, that's for if your vehicle for whatever reason stuck on the side of the road tow truck driver can actually get on a truck um, because there is no handbrakes in these things that um, release the release the parking brakes so when you're working on teslas and stuff um, you definitely want to know what you're doing so anyways i am going to go ahead and we'll stop here for a second i'm going to go ahead and get the clear coat finish on and get tape pulled off and then come back and show you the uh, finished product stay tuned all right, well, we just finished up uh, doing the clear coat. So it's all clear coat, logos are sealed in, has this nice brilliant shine. 
uh, hardened durability, which right now, though, it's still going off and uh, releasing all the uh, chemicals so it can actually harden up. So a little bit of time before I actually, um, you know, get the wheels put back onto the car and get this guy um, all settled and done. But um, so as far as when it comes to the clear coat finish, what I do is standards or what factory standards are usually about two to two and a half layers of clear coat. Um, being two and a half layers of clear coat is basically a medium coat or a tack coat, what we call, um, and then two wet layers of clear coat. Depending on what type of clear coat is being used, um, wait time could be anywhere from, and also environment, what type of hardeners are using fast, medium, slow hardeners, obviously depending on weather temperature, especially if you're doing it outside, um, you're not in a control of the environment like a, like a downdraft spray booth is. Uh, so you will be using different um, activators, um, hardeners essentially, um, depending on what type of weather condition you're in. Obviously, if it's really hot outside, you want to use a slow uh, activator uh, so it doesn't go off too fast. And then if it's a little cold outside or cooler outside, uh, obviously you want to use a faster activator to help it speed up the uh, the dry time so it doesn't take a long time for it to, to start to dry. Um, so two and a half layers of clear coat is usually factory standards. Um, what I do is actually I do attack coat, medium coat, and three layers of clear coat. I like to make sure there's a nice deep clear on there. Um, also, I want to make sure there's a lot of clear coat on there because um, obviously caliper does take a lot of punishment uh, with heat and then obviously things being thrown up at it, uh, debris and stuff that maybe get inside the uh, the wheel area or wheel well area um, just to prevent it, to make sure that it's nice and strong. So if anything does get and hit it, um, it's just not going to hit and chip the clear or chip the paint off basically, essentially. Um, and then also going back to um, paints and products, like I was explaining in the first part of this video, um, what also makes and breaks the job is what type of products that you're using. There's so many different products out there in the market. Like I said, there's the heat treated process, which, you know, you get some guys that, you know, they want to do it themselves and uh, more power to them. You know, um, obviously it's not for everybody having someone like myself come out um, and do it, but there is obviously a difference again um, on the finished result. Um, uh, the products that I do use, uh, like I said, is a high grade German based paint um, and actually comes on some of the vehicles um, as far as BMWs, Mercedes, uh, Porsche goes. Um, it's the two products that I use is uh, Speedsecker and Standox, which are German based companies actually owned by DuPont. DuPont bought them out. Uh, I can't remember when, but it's been a few years that they've they, they bought them up. Um, but fantastic paint finishes unfortunately very expensive. Um, but you know, I don't like cutting corners when doing my work. Um, you know, it's something that I take pride in and it's something that, um, I want to make sure that's going to last a long time as well as hold a nice luster, have a great color. Um, and these two products are fantastic products. Again, not cheap, um, but I'm willing to spend the extra money to make sure that my, my customers and their vehicles, uh, get the proper attention, the proper, uh, products, uh, that they deserve. Um, and not cut corners. So without any more chatting, I'm around and show you the end result here. So you can see nice smooth finish and where a lot of people get really surprised too is again I'm a mobile service I come out and I do this on site at your location and you know people are usually pretty blown away uh one obviously um the the end result and just how good that the product looks and uh, how smooth it is glossy as well as um, being able to refinish something like this mobily and get the results that i do without um, having a downdraft spray booth um, obviously being outside and not in a controlled environment you deal with elements outside like today is raining um, so obviously there's certain procedures and different things I have to do in order to uh, do the refinishing as well as debris if you look here inside the finish um, and every once in a while you may very get a very small particle but there's certain again certain things to do uh, to help eliminate as much as possible um, but you know it really looks like in here from what I'm seeing um, especially through the camera um, there may be maybe one, maybe a couple, couple areas, but I really can't see them at all. I mean, 
it's just a really there's a small one right there but to the eye standing right here that looking at it without being this close up I mean you just don't see it um, so here's the pro you know finished product like I said we get the majority pretty much the entire caliper as you see even out there in the back I mean this whole thing has been pretty much done besides all the way back back behind it um, just because I'm not going to crawl up underneath the car and, and paint the backside but you know no one sees it and um, it's never an issue or a problem you know with everything else but you can see even inside uh, the guts and areas in here I'm able to get the uh, paint and finishes back up in there because again at the end of this all I want this to look like this is something that uh, the vehicle came with and it was purchased this way um, you will notice that the logos tend to be a little bit bigger uh, but my clients actually like it more that way. Um, it's just that the guys that make these things, unfortunately, have a very tough time getting the exact size. It's not too far off of what the factory is, but it tends to be a little, little bit bigger. Uh, but really, it's not a big heartbreaker. I can go ahead and show you the back. Here's the back caliper. One thing I do want to point out is on this particular caliper, this back arm piece right here, um, does have a little bit of texture to it that's not the paint finish itself that's actually the metal itself it's more of a casted metal versus a nice casted smooth metal as you can see like here on the front of this caliper and even on the back side here that you can really just see how clean this paint comes out how smooth it is and it does have a very slight orange peel to it which you know all point paint does um, but you try to minimize or keep it as as factory orange peel as possible um, I just like to make sure, you know, with proper reductions, airflow, air pressure, volume control, um, which is nice about the HVLP guns that you have that capability of doing all this control stuff to get a finished product like this. So we are done with this job and done with this video. So I do really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, watch this. And hopefully maybe this is a little bit more insight if you're thinking about doing your calipers um, versus you doing it personally yourself or having someone like myself. And there's unfortunately, it's not a lot of guys running around doing this. Um, actually, I probably am one of the first guys mobily to ever do this about 15 years ago. Um, and it started um, in conjunction with the mobile wheel repair I do. I also do mobile wheel repairs, so I come out and I repair curb damage wheels on site. Uh, the reason why the calipers came into play was actually uh, a dealership here in Orange County um, by the name of McKenna Porsche. I did a lot of work for them as far as their wheel repair goes. One of the uh, service managers came in the back and said, hey, I got a customer that wants, um, just bought a Porsche, doesn't want to spend six grand on a new set of calipers that are red. And, you know, do you think you can paint them? And I said, well, sure, I'll give it a shot. And... Uh, customer was happy service manager was happy they started selling it through the service drive and that's when I actually started noticing that there was a want and a need uh, for this service to be done and that's something that then eventually added on to uh, my mobile wheel repair uh, process I did I decided because of all of the um, customer inquiries as well as uh, uh, people coming and wanting to get it done through McKenna Porsche um, I decided that I would add this to my process. Of course, now there's you know other guys out there running around doing it. Um, whether or not they have the experience or not, I don't know. But at least this maybe gave you a little bit more, like I said, insight to if it's something you're looking or wanting to do versus doing it yourself uh, or having someone like myself or hiring somebody to uh, do this process. Always do your research. Always do your, uh, your check on them. Uh, ask them the questions. Hopefully there's a, a, enough information I gave here to you in this video that if you are looking for someone to do it you have questions asked you know what uh, products or um, process that they're doing um, do they back their stuff um, you know hopefully this gave you like I said a little bit more insight and knowledge into the caliper refinishing process um, mobily and again there's other guys out there that do you can bring the car into they will remove the caliper from the car and rather than paint they would powder coat Essentially, powder coating is stronger process as, a, as far as a, a finish goes. Not bulletproof, um, but paint can be just as strong um, with, a, with the proper care and the proper knowledge as well as prepping. 
Um, paint can be very strong too as well. Um, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you guys have any questions, concerns, um, down at the bottom, I'll have my cell phone number, uh, my email address, uh, my website information. Go out and check it out. Check it out on Yelp. See the reviews I've been able to get um, over these years and the happy, satisfied customers that I do have. And uh, hit that like, hit that follow, and uh, share this video with your friends. And uh, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to watch us. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me anytime. I'd love to be able to answer them and uh, maybe even one day uh, come out and do uh, either wheel repair or caliper refinishing for you. Take care and be blessed. Bye.